Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, you guys. We're starting off with this picture that I got from Twitter from uh, Sarah Mack, and it's called All Dogs Go to Heaven. Love it. We have a lot of stories to cover. We're going to start with some comments that you guys made on some of my stories, and then we're just going to jump into the big stuff. By the way, I want you guys to know I am not sick. Um, the reason I sounded so bad in that last video was because I ran out of my allergy medication and I have really bad allergies. The summertime here, the pollen, the two cats, the dog, and that is what I sound like without allergy medicine on board. So, um, and at the end of this video, I'll explain why there was no video for Saturday morning. So let's just jump in and get going, shall we? Let's go. To start off with, on the article that I put out about how people are saying William should reach out to Harry to fix the rift, Mary Sasser pointed out that Prince William did reach out to Harry and Gail King told the whole world, spot on. One of my followers, Miss Ringo, uh, was asking about my neighbor. Now, if it's my neighbor with COVID, she has completely recovered. She's doing quite well. She didn't get it like I did. As a matter of fact, a lot of people don't get as sick as I did. I'm not sure why I ended up with double pneumonia and nobody else has, but okay. And if it's my neighbor next door that was in cardiac arrest, I think I've told you guys, but I'll just give you a brief update. He is home. He walks. He dresses himself. He feeds himself, but he's... He can't hold a conversation. He doesn't drive. He's now been declared disabled from the brain damage, and um, he's got a he's got a long road to go. But he's getting there. He's getting there. All right, moving on. On the story I put up where uh, the blind item came out that said that Harry and Megan signed a lease on a house in Bel Air because Megan's sick of the commute. Sue Hensy points out where is she sick of commuting to? <laughs> Point well made. On the story about Harry saying he wanted the right people to make sure that the right people were around, around the Queen, uh, Kate pointed out that Harry said he's worried about protecting the Queen and wants to make sure she has the right people around her. But that didn't stop him from hiring a violent criminal drunk to, be, to protect and be around his wife and kids. Very interesting and spot on comment. When I talked about adopting Flora, this particular follower said uh, I should adopt Flora and she wants to adopt Johnny Thompson. <laughs> and other people were like, get in line. Oh my goodness. And finally, Leo Wren wants me to say these words correctly. So that's Beatrice Gloucestershire Wimbledon. <laughs> How'd I do? How'd I do? Uh, don't expect to hear those correctly again unless I have this sheet <laughs> in front of me on the desk. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, let's jump in. All right, this has nothing to do with the Royals, but I'm going to touch on it anyway. Ivana Trump or Ivanka Trump, however you want to say it. Donald Trump's first wife. Uh, she was the one that divorced Donald after um, it was found that he was having an affair with Marla Maples. And she walked away with a lot of money. Apparently, she was having mobility issues. She had this great grand staircase. She fell down the staircase. She was found uh, at the bottom of the staircase in cardiac arrest. Um, she did not survive. They're saying that her body was covered in bruises. Um, apparently, a lot of people pass away from falls, um, but um, yeah, so uh, it's a shame, and uh, she was a great woman. She was a, uh, um, a model. She was a uh, skier. She was a ski instructor. She had a very colorful life. Condolences to her three children. All right, next up, apparently um, after Philip died and Megan said she wasn't coming to Philip's funeral, apparently the queen was extremely relieved to hear this. I have no trouble believing that. We all know that they turned Philip's death into a PR exercise. We know that uh, they made sure everybody knew which wreath was theirs, who made the wreath, what was on the card, who wrote the card, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas the queen just wanted to on her honor Philip. He, she wasn't interested in all this other stuff that was going on. I'm telling you. 
Now, these statements were made in Tom Bauer's new book, which, you know, we know that he is a very, he's like a pit bull when it comes to the books. He's never been sued for misinformation. I think this is going to be one hell of a book. I can't wait to get my hands on it. All right, moving on. All right, moving on. Now we might know what prompted the queen to announce that only working royals would appear on the balcony. It does appear that um, Harry asked the queen if they could be on the balcony. They wanted to be there, you know, with the family. They needed the pictures with the royals. And the uh, queen said no. And now it looks like that's why the announcement was put out. They are now private citizens, therefore no carriage ride, no balcony. They're saying that Megan was upset because after all, her value to Netflix is to be, you know, taped with the queen. Uh, the advisors were very resistant. And um, when this failed, he then said to the queen, I'd like to visit you in Windsor on the way to the Netherlands for the Invictus Games. And um, so this was supposed to be an olive branch, you know, to clear the air. We already heard that. And she agreed to meet them. Apparently, she did not meet with Megan. She only met with Harry. And apparently that was one of the things they discussed in the meeting. He tried to bend her to his will at that meeting. And uh, no, she didn't bend. Sorry. All right, the stories are starting to come out. Harry and Meghan are going to be turning down the invite to reunite with the family at Balmoral. Yeah, they're going to turn down the invite if they get an invite, which tells me they didn't get an invite. So now they're trying to spin it. Here we go. All right, moving on. Once again, I want to thank Baroness Buck because she found yet another new hire uh, in charge of the communications front line. I think they're there to help wipe the web. That's what I think. All right, moving on. I want to thank Jen for this photo because it clearly shows that Harry has been jealous of William for an extremely long time. I mean, the articles are coming out saying that Harry has, quote, poison in his blood and wants to show his power over William. It's being said now that Harry has become bitter and resentful about the royal family. All of his and Meghan's plans to, like, damage the family haven't worked. Stuff is, more and more stuff is coming out about Meghan. Uh, the brothers are no longer speaking. And as it was said in the comments earlier today, William reached out and uh, Harry let it be known on Good Morning America or whatever the show was, you know. So at this point, um, yeah, he wants to show his brother he's as big as he is. But he's not. And that's the problem. He's not the heir. He's the spare. And he could never, ever pull that together. And that's why he's trying to reclaim his power with that book that he's writing. We already know that that book is going to show Harry as the war hero. And it's not going to mention the fact that he was called Bunker Harry and he had his own security team and his own safe place so nothing could happen to him. It's going to paint him as such a wonderful human being. And it's going to make his family look bad because that's the whole point of the book. But, you know, what I don't think they realize or Harry realizes is this victim narrative of his is getting so old. People just aren't interested in it anymore. They're really Really not. I don't understand why he hasn't figured that out yet. I also want to say that I take issue with people who said they weren't friends and they didn't have anything in common and they weren't close before Harry met Meghan. They were close. They were very close. Absolutely. All right, next up, I'm just bringing up something that happened in the past. And this is what happens when you call Meghan and Harry out on their stuff, okay, and they get caught. So here's what happened. The BBC put out a report that the Sussexes did not ask permission from Queen Elizabeth to name their daughter after the Queen using her nickname. And of course, um, Megan's spokeswoman said that Harry would not have chosen the name if the Queen had not been supportive. And then they had their attorneys come out and say the BBC better apologize and withdraw the report or they're going to sue for defamation, blah, 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 blah. And the palace backed BBC. And what happened? You never heard another word from the Sussexes. The threat evaporated and there was no lawsuit because they knew they couldn't win. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, we have really great news 
for William, the Duke of Cambridge. The Earthshot Prize has now become an independent charity separate from the Royal Foundation, and Prince William has been named the president. Four trustees have been named, and one of them is, drum roll, please, blah, 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 blah. Jason Knopf. Yay for him. I'm so happy for William. He totally deserves this. All right, moving on. Next up, I was very happy to see this. The queen made a surprise visit to a hospice with Princess Anne. She walked in. Of course, she was using her cane, uh, which I think is a good thing. Uh, but she uh, looked fabulous. She's so dainty. Look how little. And people were so happy to see her. Watch this. She walked in, she greeted people. I am so hardened. It just, it just makes my heart so full, you know what I mean? To see how much she's loved by the people. They're so happy to see her. So anyway, she walked in, she started talking to people. This is where it gets really funny because she's meeting the husband of one of the patients and his cell phone starts ringing and he turns around to answer it. Like, are you kidding? Ugh, watch this. Hilarious. Then she met some more of the staff. There are people so <laughs> she and Anne both got beautiful bouquets of flowers. Then it became time to unveil the plaque. Now, can I invite you to open Yes. The only thing that's concerning me is when I look at her hands, you can see the obvious um, bruising on her hands. That could be from anything. So, you know, I wouldn't panic. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, that's the only thing that concerns me is the way her hands look. Anyway, she spent a, a, a normal amount of time there. I also noticed, as I've said before, they never go on these trips without another family member. So then she sat down to sign the book, and then she headed out. Watch this. That's the problem. Is everybody as happy as I am to see that smile? Look how spry she looks. I love it. All right, let's move on. All right, next up, we're delving into this whole Vanity Fair thing. A piece of Mr. Bauer's book has, has been released, and this is what it's saying, which I have no trouble believing this, okay? So here's what happened. Sunshine Sachs, it appears, arranged for this interview. And apparently it was only done because they found out that she was dating Harry. That's right. It, that was it. It was just Harry. All right. So she gave the interview to, to Vanity Fair and she said to the guy at Vanity Fair that it should represent her as a major actor, which she wasn't. She was just in that one show, that one cable show, and as an activist and a philanthropist. Okay. So she's giving the interview, and the guy said right off the bat, um, I don't know who this woman is. And Megan was apparently told, do not discuss Trump, do not discuss race, and do not 
discuss our relationship. You are not to mention me. Okay. That's exactly what she was told. And then he watched this guy who was giving the interview, was getting the interview from her, watched her prepare lunch in her kitchen. And uh, she baked a cake and she, you know, tried to soften him up by asking him questions about his school and marriage and work. And so the, the guy that was doing the interview said, I began to sense there was like a reversal of roles. But he, let me tell you what he noticed. He said, all the kitchen walls were covered with photos of her. He said, all the books on the coffee table had to do with London, but he got the feeling she hadn't read any of them. He said he felt very uneasy before he even started asking her questions. Now, this is where it gets interesting because Megan spoke to this guy about her speech to the UN, about the letter to Procter & Gamble when she was 11. She said she got a letter from Hillary Clinton. Um, she, I mean, she said a lot of things. And um, she tried to butter up the guy that was doing the interview, saying things to him like, quote, I like you, especially your stuttering. So the guy said he knew he was being played. He knew it. And then he said, well, tell me about Harry, thinking she wouldn't answer. And instead, she immediately went, we're a couple, we're in love, and asking the, the guy about his marriage. And she goes, I'm sure there'll be a time we'll come forward and present ourselves. But this is our time. This is for us. This is a great love story. So even though she'd been told not to say anything, she blabbed all over the place, okay? She, she said that... Um, Tennis player Serena Williams was her friend. Well, apparently to this guy, Serena denied she was Megan's friend, said she was just an acquaintance. She says she gave him an enigmatic quote saying, quote, you've got to be who you are, Megan. You can't hide. He said as soon as he got back to New York, Megan sent him spices. He called it Megan's snow job. Now, Vanity Fair has very scrupulous researchers and the problem they were having is they could find no evidence of her global philanthropy and her activism. Hollywood philanthropy, they said, is PR philanthropy. So Sunshine Sachs is demanding that the magazine say that Megan be presented as a philanthropist and an activist, even though they could find no proof of any of this. Now, remember, she was told specifically not to mention Harry. So the pre-publication copies came out. They were given, one was given to Sunshine Sachs, one was given to Buckingham Palace. And we all know the front of it said, she's just wild about Harry. And apparently, Megan panicked and called Sunshine Sachs hysterically and said that Buckingham Palace was furious. And um, Sunshine Sachs said Megan should have ensured her that the comments about Harry were removed. Why wasn't the focus on her philanthropy and her activism? And uh, they were, Sunshine Sachs was apparently afraid that Megan was gonna fire them. And they, they couldn't figure out why Buckingham Palace would be angry. Well, come to find out, Buckingham Palace was not angry. They couldn't care less. So Megan started complaining because she wasn't presented in the way she wanted and she demanded that the media do what she expected and it didn't happen that way. Why was she upset, right? Why was she upset? Well, apparently she wanted to be put out there as a philanthropist, but they said they could not show anything that she got a reply from Clinton and also Procter & Gamble. So the entire campaign, they said, was fictitious, invented by her dad. I, I, it's just crazy. So Vanity Fair did agree to one correction, one correction. Guess what that correction was? Well, apparently, when Megan met Harry, she was still living with Chef Corey Vitiligo. I think that's how you say it. So she said, I didn't meet Harry in May. I met Harry in July, not May because she didn't want to look like, you know, a, a, a social climbing, whatever. So that's the only correction that they made. In 2016, Harry was in Canada promoting the Invictus Games. And there was a rumor going around that that's how they met and exchanged phone numbers, which doesn't jive with the story that's going around that they met on a blind date. So the producers of Suits were all excited, thinking this was going to help their ratings. It didn't. And, um... The only, only thing that happened was Harry, she hooked Harry. That was it. 
Now I'm telling you guys, this guy Tom Bowers is known for being a pit bull when it comes to these interviews. He leaves no stone unturned. And I guarantee you that if he's writing it, these people said it. And I don't think that 50 or 60 or 70 people that have all come into contact with Megan are all liars. Although I'm pretty sure the Sussex squad will claim that everybody's lying because they're all racist. We know what's coming. I, you know, in the United States, the book won't be available. It's being released in the UK first, unfortunately. So I'm not going to be able to get my hands on it as quickly as anybody else. Uh, but I do plan as, you know, on, on reading it. I, I, this is going to be one of those books where I'm going to like whip through it in a day because I won't be able to stop myself. So ladies and gentlemen, um, let me explain to you what happened. Uh, we put our house on the market. <laughs> I'm, you know, we're moving. So the house went up for sale and we only had a couple of showings and then every few minutes, ding, another showing, ding, another showing. So it's like a hundred degrees here. Uh, we were out all day. We couldn't get back into the house. Uh, the showings went from 10 o'clock in the morning till like seven, eight o'clock at night. And we got multiple offers and the house sold in one day, but I couldn't get back into the house. Cause you know, you can't be here while people are, um, you know, showing the house. And so I couldn't get in, I couldn't get to the computer and I couldn't get to my cell phone, so I couldn't make a movie. So that's what happened. But we did sell the house, yay us. And um, we're on to the next adventure. Um, I'll be updating everybody on that uh, a little bit later, just not right now. So make sure to leave those comments because you know I want them about everything that's going on. What do you think about the Bowers book? Oh my God, I can't wait to get this book. Oh, it's gonna blow her wide open you know the bullying allegations the possible gluing of somebody's eyes closed in college it's all gonna come spilling out in this book i cannot wait to, to read this book and what do you guys think about the queen showing up for the hospice house and what do you think about william and the Earthshot prize so much good news you guys so much good news so leave those comments below because obviously you know i'm reading them okay don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. If you've already hit the subscribe button, double check and make sure you're still subscribed, okay? Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, Getter, Rumble. You can email me. For those of you who've donated to my coffee fund and who've hit the thank button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.